Welcome to the May edition of the Bloyd Today Show. I'm Pam Lathrop and I'm Beth Jacobson. And we have a full show. We are springing into the season. <laughs> Sorry, I have to make a pun. <laughs> Beth, who are you going to interview today? Uh, well, we're down at the Lagoon, and I'm going to interview uh, Sonia Baden, and she's going to tell us about all the things that we have going on in Parks and Leisure Services this summer. And um, there's not nearly enough time to cover everything, so we, we're going to do a quick overview, and then we want everyone to um, read the flyer that's going to come into their homes. Oh, I like that flyer. It it's, should be on everybody's living room table. Yes, and it's also available online because I have it saved on my desktop at work. <laughs> Great. Then um, we're going to be moving off to the north a little bit and um, talking about some of the construction that's going on. Right. We're going to interview, um, one of us is going to interview um, Jason Dupuy. He's one of our project engineers. And um, as you know, the Henry Avenue Bridge is under construction. And he's going to talk about some of the other projects we have this summer. So hopefully it won't be... Um, we're going to try to let just Henry Avenue Bridge be the biggest project, I think, this summer. And I think this show is a little bit oriented towards the Public Works Department because um, this is their big month. They're going to be having their open house um, for Public Works Week. And so we're going to be going over there to talk to Patty Miller and P.W. Fox, who has a birthday coming up. He does. Yes. He'll, he'll be at the open house. He'll be celebrating his second birthday. So I know my family and my niece like to attend that. So um you know, if you want some cake and ice cream and to see our mascot, <laughs> you should attend. And then we have one more interview with Larry Arft, and he's going to be talking about the Wagner's Redevelopment Project downtown, which is a really big thing. It's going to be very exciting. Right. Larry knows all the details, um, the details that we don't know from the office. So hopefully um, everyone can get an overview of what's going to happen downtown. And uh, it's going to be pretty exciting from what I understand. So, so let's get started. Hi, I'm here with Sonia Baden. She's our Recreations Coordinator at the City of Beloit, and we're here down at the Lagoon, um, and we're going to talk about things that the Rec Department has going, Parks and Leisure Services <laughs> has going on this summer. That's right, it's all the same. Okay, and um, the Lagoon, uh, when this airs, you'll be able, the paddle boats will be open for um, rental, yeah. and, um, and we've got lots of things going on. So let's start with what's going on now um, in May. Sure. Um, starting in May, our Lagoon paddle boats will be open for concessions and rental um, on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays from noon until 7. Uh, we are seven days a week starting in June, but during the month of May only on Saturdays and Sundays. We're also open Memorial Day. Um, also opening soon is the Kruger Pool. Uh, that opens June 7th, which is a Thursday. So starting that Thursday, we'll be open uh, seven days a week when the kids are out of school. Um, all kinds of things going on there this year. Also, we've got uh, DJs on Fridays. There's just like five or six Fridays throughout the summer um, where we'll have a DJ at the pool. And then also it's a great place to have a birthday party. So, and I see that you have this flyer in your hands. And yeah. when um, this show airs, everyone should have received them. And there's information about everything we talk about today in this flyer, correct? Yeah, this is our summer guide. Um, it's basically 20 pages full of anything you could ever hope to find. Um, that has to do with Parks and Rec for the summer months. Um, this goes out uh, Sunday, May 6th, so if you don't get this in your state line shopper, you can also get it online um, through the city's webpage at cityofbeloit.com, or through Google is the easiest way to yeah. find it. It's uh, www.ci.beloit.wi.us. Easier just to search City of Beloit, um, but this will be available on there, and it also um, is available through our Parks and Leisure Services office. And about the pool, if they, can they get tickets? Can they go to the Parks and Leisure Services office, or do you just go to the big pool when you want to show up? Good question. If they're looking to get a season pass, they can come to our office anytime. Um, also, you can pay daily admission at the pool, or you can also pay for um, a season pass at the pool. So depending on which way you want to go, you can do it almost either place. So the parents that um, want to send their, their children to the pool every day can get a season's pass, but if they don't, if you're, maybe your children aren't swimmers, there's other programs that we have going on at Parks and Leisure Services. Can you talk about um, the summer camps that you have? Yeah, sure. Um, we have a few different park programs going on. Uh, we do a free park program, which is from noon to 3, Monday through Friday, all summer long for 10 weeks. Uh, this is at Kruger Park, Vernon Park, and Summit Park. Um, those we work with the Salvation Army to provide a free lunch for the kids every day, so that's a great thing. We also have trained staff at, both, uh, uh, at all three locations. Um, so that's a good program during the week if you have kids that are you know, old enough to stay home but need something to do. Um, also, we have a camp at Big Hill Park, which is more of an all-day adventure camp. 
Uh, that runs daily from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. So if you're a worker and you have to work eight hours a week, this camp is perfect. That camp is available for six to 10 year olds. And how do they sign up for that program? Any of these programs, they can sign up through the Parks and Leisure Services office, uh, 1003 Pleasant Street. Also, the park programs don't take any registration, so if you're looking to just do the Kruger, Vernon, or Summit free programs, you can just drop into those locations. If you want to sign up for Big Hill Camp, you do have to register at our office. And something that you may not know is that when I was 16, I worked at Vernon Park, and I was... <laughs> I don't know if Larry will let me off during the day, but I was one of those one of those uh, park supervisors, and so it's a great time. And the kids in the neighborhood usually know each other, so there's not really a whole lot of, you know, they kind of have the energy yeah. and do, do their own thing. But there is um, there is a lunch, and and that's that's something that you know I know the school district and the city of Beloit promotes a lot is making sure that the students when they're outside that they're um, getting fed and that they're not getting dehydrated. And um, can we also talk about the triathlon that's coming up? Yeah, I do want to, it's a little early, I know, to plug the triathlon. It doesn't happen until the end of June. It's the last Sunday in June, the 24th, um, but we need 30 to 40 volunteers for this event, so we try to plug it as early as we can and let people know, even if you're not a triathlete and you're not interested in participating, people like Pam Lathrop are great at coming out and helping <laughs> us out with this event. We do need a lot of manpower, so even if it's not exactly your thing, you know, we're still looking for plenty of volunteers to help out. Anybody can do that. So you can either sign up and participate or you can volunteer. So all, all of these things can happen, can happen if you come down to Parks and Leisure Services. And it's right on the corner of Portland and Pleasant. Um, and White and Riverside. <laughs> and or White and Riverside. Um, so make sure you come down, visit Sonia during the day. Um, you'll probably see her out. She's at almost all of the events that we have. She's a busy lady. So, so um, any, anything else? I think that's about it. If there's anything you have more questions about, we'd love to get emails or calls, questions, stop in. We love to talk about what we do. So the best way to reach us is 608-364-2890, and any three of us can answer any questions on anything. Well, great. Thanks, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for having the interview. This is fun. Hi, I'm here with Jason Dupuy. He is our uh, traffic engineer at the city of Beloit, and we're here, um, if you can see behind us, at the Henry Avenue Bridge, and we're going to talk about some of the construction projects that we have going on this summer. Uh, clearly, this is the biggest project we have going on, so hopefully um, traffic won't be inundated too much, but can you talk about some of the, I know there's two projects downtown that people, that may interfere with maybe the farmer's market or um, Riverfest? Sure. The uh, first project we have is the Mill Street parking lot. It's going to be resurfaced. Uh, this is the parking lot behind uh, Bagels and More or the Bushel and Pecks over there. That project actually is going to be starting um, the second week of May and should be finished uh, before June 1st. And so it'll have a, a little bit minimal impact on the uh, farmer's market pre-sale, but uh, once the full-blown farmer's market starts, uh, that project will be completed. Uh, the second project we have is the West Grand Avenue parking lot uh, that's near the Masonic Temple. That project won't start until uh, the middle of July. It'll be after the Riverfest um, celebration. Uh, that's a full reconstruct, and so um, that project will last uh, a month or two as we reconstruct the curb and gutter, resurface the uh, asphalt parking lot and uh, update the lighting in that in that parking lot. And for those of you who don't know, um, Riverfest will be down on Water Street um, this summer and so we always try to keep in mind the events that are happening and as you know if you live in Beloit we have lots of events happening so Riverfest will be moved and we're going to try to minimize um, any parking interruptions during Riverfest based on the new location and um, clearly be due to the size of that project on West Grand it just simply had to wait um, and so we're excited for those two parking lots I know that the Mill Street parking lot um, that the business owners over there are excited to have it have it redone. Yep, it's a uh, it's a parking lot in need of repair. It's been probably uh, in need of repair for a few years here, so we're finally getting to the resurfacing portion of it, and we'll, um, I think all of the business owners will be happy when the product is complete. And then, in addition to that, we have some resurfacing going on in some streets in the city. Correct. Our resurfacing program will start also about the second week of May. Uh, some of the streets are um, Frederick Street, 
um, between Liberty and Whipple, um, Middle Street, uh, there's uh, one or two blocks of Hackett Street, Olympian Boulevard, uh, Lincoln Court, um, and then over by Glen Ellen on the east side. And um, with that, those projects should also be completed uh, by the second week of June. It's about a month long process. Um, minimal interruption to the traffic flow. We're going to be milling off the existing uh, surface and replacing the surface at, at, at these locations. Um, there is a possibility that later in the summer we'll have a second resurfacing project. It'll all depend on timing and funding. Um, but if you have any questions as far as the timing or when your street may be resurfaced, you can certainly call the engineering office. And you can also check our website, correct? So I see a lot of those are on the west side. And so if you live over there near um, any of those streets that you mentioned, you can always go to our website and look for the list. Or can you give the number to engineering? Yes, the number to engineering is 608-364-6690. And Beth makes a good point. We update our uh, construction pro projects on a weekly basis on the city's website. Uh, it's under the engineering department or a division and in, in underneath the city's website so and um, one thing that um, Jason and I were talking about before we started filming is that um, is if you want an update on um, Henry Avenue we're working with the DOT on this and so we get um, sort of weekly updates um, based through our staff but if you're looking for more information about the deck or if you're going to be boating um, you can always call our engineering office and they'll direct you to the appropriate person at the DOT. Um, we're excited to see this happening and as the summer approaches if you are going to be on the river make sure that you take you know you know all precautions to make sure you're safe and our um, construction workers are safe um, and is there, there's one other th oh um, sidewalks Sidewalks. Our, uh, yes, we have our annual sidewalk maintenance program. Uh, is, it's been marked out. The target areas this year are, uh, I think, the 400 to 700 block of Park Avenue and also the Athletic Avenue area over by Hilliard Park. Um, the sidewalks have been marked out. We're in the process of um, soliciting a contractor to do the work. Citizens will be given notice if they have sidewalk repair in front of their property. Uh, those notices should be going out here about the second to third week of May. And um, once again, that uh, project is updated weekly on our website. So, so I, I think that's all that we had discussed talking about. Um, as always, if you have questions, please call Engineering. And Jason, thank you for the update as always. You want to talk about the bridge? Yes. Can, <laughs> before we go, <laughs> Jason's going to give a quick update on the bridge. Uh, the bridge here, it's uh, the Henry Avenue Bridge. It's been under construction for uh, since last September. It's uh, widening the existing bridge from two lanes to four lanes. Uh, the project's on schedule. It's uh, scheduled to be complete um, of September of 2012 and should be open to traffic uh, in September. And from what I understand, there's going to be some other re construction over here on this corner near Riverside and Henry? Correct. Uh, a, a separate project, but uh, related uh, to the bridge opening here is um, the north uh, portion of Riverside Park here will have kind of an entry feature and sign to designate uh, this side of the park uh, for people traveling by. Uh, that project should also be complete by the time that the bridge opens. And I know that Sonia would want to remind people that the park is still open. You're welcome to come all the way up to the bridge, just to your clear of construction. And also on the other side, there's a nice view if you're over at Wooten Park or there's a restaurant on the other side of the river that you um, may frequent. And uh, I know that you can see construction from there, too. And I just want to make it clear to stay um, clear of the construction zone. We do have a lot of big equipment out here uh, when we're placing the bridge uh, deck and ex the existing pilings out here. So uh, enjoy the park, but stay clear of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. As you can see, we have a special guest on the show today, P.W. Fox, and Patty Miller, who is his handler and an environmental technician. Right. Thanks for coming out today. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. We have a lot to talk about. Um, we look at P.W. He's so excited. 
It's his second birthday. Yeah, he was born two years ago, and his first premiere was at the um, Blight Transit grand opening downtown when they opened the new Transit Transfer Center. So, And PW is making a special appearance. Give me five. What a paw. <laughs> <laughs> um, Patty's here to tell us about the special appearance that he's going to be making at the DBW's open house. Why, really, though, are you having an open house? The uh, week of May uh, <laughs> Yeah, May 20th through the 26th is National Public Works Week, and on May 19th, we're kicking off Public Works Week, and we're having an open house here at 2400 Springbrook Court, and it's from noon until 3. But besides the open house, um, are you having special treats for PW's birthday? Yes, we are. We're going to have cake and punch, and PW's going to have all of his friends there, so it'll be a good time. Does PW get to drive the truck on his birthday? No, he wants to really bad, but Aww. since he's only two, we can't let him drive yet. He's got to have a driver's license first. Okay, PW, you have something to aspire to now. <laughs> well, Patty, tell us some about the things that are going to be going on at the open house. We're going to have a lot of truck demonstrations. Our Vactor truck that you see behind us is going to be there, and that's used to clean out the sewer. We're also going to have um, garbage trucks, the tree crew truck, the big truck that goes way high up in the air to cut the tree limbs. We're going to have some mowers out here, one of the snow plows, and then the big snow blower that we use out in the gateway. Oh, I've seen that thing in action. That's huge. Oh, it didn't get too much action this winter, but it's no, pretty it's big. big. So can the kids kind of, you know, touch the trucks and climb around on them a little bit? They can touch the trucks. This year we might let them go in there and blow the horns, oh. so that'll be fun. Also, Happy Dolly, time. no. Well, PW can go in and honk the horn, but he can't drive. <laughs> but we are um, also going to have Dolly here, the inflatable house that the kids can go through and bounce and jump in, our dragon. That's one of PW's special friends, so she'll be here as well. Oh, well, that sounds fun. And are you going to have prizes and drawings and things? Yes, Leisure Services is going to have a bunch of games scheduled for us and they're going to have prizes for all their games. When people come in, they're going to get a goodie bag. Um, we have some sponsors, Frito-Lay and Kettle are giving chips out, so they'll be with our goodie bags and the kids will get a passport that they can take to all the different truck demos. Once they get six stamps, their name goes in for a special drawing with the grand prize being a season pool pass. Wow. To pool. This, this open house has really evolved into a big yes. event. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and we have a really good time putting it on and just letting everybody know what we do every day. Yeah, I think, you know, Public Works is sort of the quiet group of the city. I mean, you all work behind the scenes. You pick up trash and all those things that are sort of unglamorous. You were talking earlier about um, setting grease traps, and they're, you know, not the spectacular things that, you get to hear about every day so this is a great way to just sort of spotlight your great work for the citizens and um, to let people come out and see what the equipment's all about right and a lot of people like to know where their taxpayer dollars are going and this is a good way for them to actually see the equipment interact with the employees who like to tell what they do they like to, to let people know that you know this is what we do every day and this is a great way for us to do that yes well do you have anything else to add PW Oh, I guess not. <laughs> How about you? He can't talk yet. We just hope everybody comes on out. Again, it's May 19th from noon until 3 at 2400 Springbrook Court, which is the Engineering and Water Utilities Facility. Okay, and if anyone has questions, I'm sure they can call. Right, 364-2888. All right, thank you very much, um, especially PW. Thank you. He's such a gentle little thing. And he's so excited, too. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with, well, my boss, the city manager, Larry Arft, and he's going to tell us about uh, an exciting project we have going on in downtown Beloit. Um, for those of you that have lived here a long time or even a short time, uh, there's an old building on the 400 block of East Grand, and uh, we, we, we endearingly call it the former Wagner's building. <laughs> um, and Larry, can you tell us, tell us what's happening? Well, this is a, really an exciting opportunity to do a major redevelopment project downtown. Uh, the Wagner's building, as you know, has set vacant for over a decade. It's been about 11 years. Uh, the owners have tried to do various things with it. The city has worked with their broker and with the Downtown Beloit Association. Uh, we've brought many developers in. We've brought potential retailers in looking at the space. Uh, we've never found a realization for the building. Finally, the owners took it to auction this past uh, fall, uh, and uh, Diane Hendricks purchased the building. So she now owns about 
actually three addresses on the 400 block of East Grand that were formerly known as the Wagner's uh, project and they're looking at buying a couple of other buildings taking all of that down and rebuilding the block with a very traditional looking uh, architecture a new building that will blend into the historic streetscape can you tell us um, roughly how many, do you know the square footage of that building? It was a pretty massive building. Uh, the building that was there was, um, uh, total square footage was over 20,000 between, I think, that building and the adjacent structures that are involved in the project. So it was somewhere in that magnitude, and that will all be removed. And the building, the new structure will have a different footprint. There will be some room in back of it for a little plaza area and some off-street parking back. And when you say removed, uh, you, we just kind of glazed over that, but can can you describe to our viewers what, what that really means? Yeah, the building has to be removed. It is in very poor condition. It's not reusable in its present form, and it's going to be removed and a totally new structure put in its place, and it'll be four stories tall. We'll have three stories of residential on the top, and, of course, the main level, the street level, will be preserved for retail or service businesses. And when do we anticipate construction for um, the raising of the building? Actually, this is a 2012 project, and they're looking at starting demolition probably by mid-July and actual construction on the new building by the, around the 1st of October. That's that's a very fast timeline if you know construction, and I know we're really excited about it. Can you talk about some of the partners? I know that um, Hendricks, uh, I think it's Hendricks Holding, and who are who else are they working with on this project? Well, this is another Diane Hendricks, uh, Hendricks Development Company project in city center Beloit uh, to help uh, this city, as they've done so many times in the past, to renovate and redevelop an older uh, portion of our community. Um, that's how it all got started. Uh, there's also been a tremendous amount of dialogue between Hendricks Development and Beloit College about subletting the three floors of residential and using that for upper class housing so it would be available for juniors and seniors that might like to get out of the dormitory on campus, kind of have transitional housing in a downtown uh, living environment, which as you know is very popular with young people today. So this uh, uh, would be, I think, the preferred use for the building. However, if for some reason the College Board of Trustees decides they do not want the, the space, uh, they do have an alternative plan to put in 27 what they call executive quality uh, apartments, and those would be two and three bedroom apartments that would be available for rent in the open market. That's that's fantastic. I know we do have some housing downtown now, and um, you know, with all the things happening and with the Main Street Award, I mean, I can't, you know, either either alternative it sounds like would be a great project. Yeah, I think either alternative would be wonderful. The aesthetic improvements alone will be virtually dramatic. The quality of the architecture and the building is very much in keeping with the other improvements you've seen happen in Beloit over the last 10 plus years. Uh, and, and certainly to get more residents downtown, whether they're college students or whether this is, uh, you know, general rental, uh, always is helpful to the businesses downtown to have residents in close proximity. And a lot of the older downtowns that you see around the country that have been rejuvenated were rejuvenated because residents moved back downtown and they patronized the retailers and the restaurants and the other businesses that were located there. Absolutely, and I know I'm excited. Could you um, tell, I don't know if we have anything on our website, if people ha want to see images, or should they just check the newspaper? We'll, how will we update our um, residents on it? I'd watch the uh, general media outlets for right now. We do have, um, as you know, a PowerPoint presentation that was done for council. Uh, the design team, the architects that are working for Henrik's Development are still putting the finishing touches on the project, and I think uh, hopefully we'll have something for the website, but we'll probably wait till we're sure they have a final design. Sure. Well, almost always when we do interviews, we say, oh, come and check our website, but in this case, it's, it's actually a project that uh, another agency is going to carry out, so um, formal questions can be directed to Hendricks, um, and informal construction questions, um, you could certainly check with the city. Um, I do know, can we just mention one thing, is this going to and hinder anything downtown, the farmer's market, or, or anything else when people are coming to visit? No, it shouldn't. Uh, most of the construction staging will be in the back in the Broad Street parking lot. Uh, some of that parking will be lost once construction starts in the fall. But as I noted earlier, they're not planning on even starting until October, so the farmer's market will pretty much be done by the time uh, the major construction gets underway. Great. So um, keep your eye on things happening downtown. And Larry, thank you for the interview. We appreciate the update. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hello. I'm Nikki Meyer, and I'm with Friends of Riverfront. I'm the executive director. 
and today I'm talking a little bit about everything. It's May, as you well notice, the heat and the humidity are already on, and lots of things are starting. This weekend, the farmer's market, the pre-farmer's market, will be downtown, so be sure to go down and see all the good stuff that you can get. Other things that are happening downtown are the 18th and 19th will be Art Walk downtown. They'll have the trolley. It starts Friday night from 5 to 8. You can go down and see art everywhere. Speaking of art, it is our big art event coming up. It is plein air. Here's a great example of plein air means painting outdoors, capturing the light, capturing the sun, how it moves, how the plants look, how the river looks, how the ocean, how the grasses flow. Um, Gary Cole, a local uh, Beloiter, did this painting last year at our plein air. And it will start May 30th. We will have artists painting all along the riverfront, downtown, and Beloit College. Last year we had 32 artists. So welcome them to Beloit. You will see them all around. They will paint from May 30th till June 7th. They have a week to paint, get it framed, and get it to Vision Beloit. And then we will have a show and sale on Friday, June 8th. Um, judges come and tell us which ones are the best examples, and we'll have a great show and sale at Vision Beloit on that Friday night starting at 5 o'clock. Also that weekend of June 8th, 9th, and 10th, it's a new weekend. It's called God Art, and you will see lots of advertising for it. The Villager will have African American photography. Bagels and no Bushel and Peck will have culinary art. There will be art at the Arts Incubator, Connie Glowacki, I think I said it right. So there will be art all over that weekend. So God Art, you get it in Beloit. And our season is really, really kicking off. So check our website, www. Friends of Riverfront. Also, all around town, you will see this lovely music and more. Our first concert is June 15th with Little Vito and the Torpedoes, sponsored by Beloit Health System. It's a wonderful Friday night. It's a great band. These are all over the place. They are available here at the Pump House. Um, they'll be available at Visit Beloit. Um, we thank our great sponsors. We could not do any of these free concerts without our sponsors. I thank Access TV for letting me have my say and keeping you informed. So check out our website and see you in the summer on the riverfront. Thanks again. Well, that wraps up our May edition of the Beloit Today Show, and we uh, have a lot going on in the city. I think we had a lot to cover. Yes. <laughs> yes, so uh, we, I interviewed Sonia, and uh, as always, check our website for events for your children or even you to participate in um, Parks and Rec things this summer. It's always so fun just to get out there. You, you see people, there's tons of things going on, and it's just nice to get out of the house again and into the start the summer season. Yes, so make sure, and I'm excited to go down to um, Riverside and be by the lagoon and Riverside, but um, as Jason said, uh, please be very careful near, near construction. Absolutely, and um, one thing I guess we didn't cover with um, Patty and PW is the fact that they have a new turtle. I don't know if you can see the turtle out here yes. at the <laughs> engineering building, um, but she did mention that maybe they would have can you see the turtle? <laughs> Maybe they would have a turtle naming contest. So people start thinking about uh, some turtle names and um, see what comes up. And the contest would be at the open house that um, hopefully you can attend. I, I know that Pam had a fun interview with P.W. Fox. I did. He's so animated. He's doing a great job. Yes, it's nice to see him. He's kind of strutting today. He was having a great day. And you know, PW is available for community groups. So if you are interested in having PW come out and talk to your group, please do call. Um, and I'm not sure of Patty's number, but I think she mentioned it previously. I so. think it was 2888. Yes. yes. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, are we going to talk about yard waste? Yes, we just wanted to mention that the yard waste program collection will take place the first full week of each month. So we've already missed it for May, but um, it goes through October and it's the first full week. Uh, of course, as Norma would tell us, the yard waste has to be properly contained in a clean container, paper, back to nature, biodegradable yard waste bag, and a dollar fifty sticker must be affixed to each bag. Right, and please don't put it in plastic, and if you have questions, call 364-2929 as far as questions about yard waste and, and other things. 
And I think that kind of wraps up our show this week. Yes, we've had a great, uh, a lot of things to talk about. And so we hope that you are able to get out and that the weather will stay with us and have a great, have a great start to summer.